I look like I just came from the sea, and this Thank is all you. seaweed. It comes with. Oh. Hey guys, it's Kate and Z and, and other, other adventures. adventures. On this episode of our 81 day van life road trip around the USA, we're visiting San Juan Islands. These friends were really nice. We slept outside their house. But now we're gonna be trying to head to San Juan Islands. Okay, I said trying because we couldn't get tickets online, but we're gonna head to the ferry terminal anyway. On our way there, we realized we had a problem. A pretty shitty one. Our black water tank is filling up. Our grey water tank is about 80% full. Because our truck is literally full of shit right now. We'll deal with that later, because for now, getting to San Juan Island is our priority. Okay, and there's no reservation, correct? No reservation. We tried to, but we weren't able to online. You're go to the stop sign near then, and you'll be on that 11.55 departure. Woohoo! We got our tickets in no time and got onto the car boat as planned. So what can you tell us about um, San Juan Island? I know there's like a city slash town on it called Friday Harbor. A lot of people go there like vacationing in the summer. We're going a little bit in the winter. So this ferry boat has like not very many cars on it. Which is lucky because that's exactly how we got on it. <laughs> yeah. These are salami whips. Eight feet of tender traditional salami with robust onion, garlic, and habanero notes. It is so good! <laughs> this was the best view we could get, but was it worth the climb up though? Hmm. About one and a half hours later, we arrived in beautiful San Juan. It's like this place came out of a Disney movie, guys. Okay, but first, we got a van problem to deal with. Trying to figure out where we can empty our black and grey water tank. This is the current state of what we're going through. He's basically connecting the um, black water tank to that hose. The shit's gonna come out. Does it smell? It smell anything. Luckily, there's a nice breeze going on. Yeah. It's coming my way though, into the van. Uh-oh. Stinky. Now okay. let's take a look at the tanks. Fresh tank, 88. Actually, that's pretty good still. Black, zero. Yay! Gray tank, also zero. Woohoo! This is the thing that conditions your shit. You have to put it after, yeah, correct? After. Okay, and then flush it. Done. We did it. Wait, I'm gonna wash my hands. Oh after yeah. Five years. Working at this cafe when the the store owner just popped out. Dude, you're just leaving two complete strangers in your store. She's lucky I'm from Singapore. This can happen in Singapore, but it can also happen in like the small towns in the US. There's a lot of trust. Yeah, she can count on us for sure. We had dinner at Downrigger. Not many restaurants were open for dine-ins due to COVID, so we just settled for what was most convenient. It was good because we were starving. We popped by the market chef early the next morning to grab some food. Ooh, a corner just for sustainable items? Oh, that's nice. Tomato soap. Like, yeah, I have a whole... I like a pizza. Okay, Z, I get that you're hungry. Let's get some food. This is a delicata. It has an edible rind. We're gonna get some vegetables and some of that, and then we're gonna go on a van life picnic. Speaking of which... The cabana van is supposed to be hotel on wheels, and I definitely think it's living up to our expectations. Especially because I'm Singaporean, I don't like to tough it out too hard. Being on the road for 81 days is already kind of tricky. True words. But I'm loving it so far. And I surprisingly am loving it as well. I was like, ah, uh, something's gonna go wrong. I like to keep my expectations a little mm. low, especially trying something new. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm like hyping myself up, then everything will be right, wrong, right? Right, right, Manage expectations. It hasn't been perfect throughout the way. Like, I've jammed my hand in the door, I've hit my head on this thing, on that thing, on I, this thing. I cut my hand trying to reach into things. Oh yeah, like, and it's not any fault of the vans, it's just, you know, a new space. You need to get used to it. You know what? Let's just show you. Hi! It's time for the cabana van tour! Come on in! Let's go through the features one by one. This is a double bed and it comes with bed sheets, blankets, this extra pillow. It also has a TV. This is our bathroom. It's spacious enough so that when you're soaping yourself, your elbows don't hit the wall. And it even comes with shampoo, shower foam, and conditioner. On this side of the bathroom, there's also toilet paper. This 
actually has hot and cold water. If you're afraid of cold showers like me, especially in the winter time, this is the great setup. On this side of the bathroom, you will see two hooks which we use to hook our towels. It doesn't get wet even when we shower. Here, as you can see, is where we put the little squeegee thing so we can clean the walls after we've showered. So this toilet is amazing. Before you go do your thing, you pull this lever to fill it up with a little bit of water. And then when you're done, you just have to do it all the way to empty it. And then there's this full length mirror to make sure that if you're from Singapore and you don't know how to layer up like an onion, you don't look a mess. So this is the sink area. And all you have to do if you want to use the sink is to open the top. There you go. The next part of the sink that I really enjoy the coffee drawer. You have a hot water boiler that you can plug in here every morning. Actually, Cabana Van also provides some coffee. I tried this already. It was very good. There are another two drawers here, but I'll save this one for later. And move on to the bottom drawer. So here we have a bin. Let me see, should I show you what's in there? Yeah, no, it's okay. We also put wet toilet tissues. There's toilet paper in here provided by Cabana Van. Zenus is so extra. He bought a hair dryer. And we have our toothbrushes in here. And we also have Mr. Clean Magic Eraser because our friend told us it cleans everything. And I also have my Lunette cup for that time of the month. Remember that drawer that Kate didn't show you? This is what it turns into. Ta-da! It's a seat! The amazing thing about these drawer rollers is that they are rated so that you can sit in them with a full adult and it's not going to ruin anything. Cabana provides a lagoon table mount and the table is located behind the driver's seat. You just slot it onto this, tighten it, and you're ready to go. This table can be raised and lowered in order to match the same counter height, and this way you can prepare food really easily. Under the bed, there's actually a lot of storage. The first one being a fridge. We have taken time to stock it up. Let's move on down to the equipment drawer. Most of this is Xenus' stuff, and Neosporin just in case we hurt ourselves, Tums in case we have acid reflux. Just when you think, wow, we have a lot of storage space, we have more. All the dry foods go in here, the bread, some of our tissue papers. Also, a lot of masks go in here. This is our coat cabinet. And there's even a little safe at the back, so nobody will know that you got secrets to hide. These are two pull-out compartments just for your luggages. I folded my clothes in the KonMari method so that you can see everything you have at one glance. And when you're done with it, you simply slide it in, close the cupboard, and Lock it. Welcome to the technical side of the van because Kate doesn't know about that. We only have two control panels. This control panel tells us how our water tank levels are doing. Here we have the water pump switch. If this is off, none of our water will work, so this always has to be on when we're ready to use it. A nice feature of the recent Cabana vans is this thermostat. This allows us to turn a heater on at night that uses a small amount of gasoline over the course of the night to heat up the van inside so you'll never be cold. And when you need hot water, you just press the hot water switch. Cabana has put some of these USB-A ports around the van. It has a 5 volt 1 amp and a 5 volt 2 amp and it can power all the devices. But what's really cool is there's normal 120 volt outlets here where you can plug in any of the things that you bring along with you. This switch controls the light in the back and this switch controls the light and fan in the bathroom. Up front, you have the normal Ford Transit interior. What's really nice though is Cabana provided these cups and we've been using these for filling up our water and coffee along the way. Something that is really useful in this van is that the front seat swivels all the way around. Takes a little getting used to, but once you do, you have a full seat that faces into the van. This is great, because Kate and I can eat comfortably in our van like this. Cabana provides everything you'll need. You can see that in this, we have 
a tool kit, a broom and dustpan, and in the back there is a jumper cable and a hose plus an ice scraper for that cold weather winter. That cold winter weather. <laughs> <laughs> Here you can see we have a hose hookup. So when you need to take a shower outside, you just hook up the hose there and you'll be able to take a shower, even a hot one. Here is an access panel for all of the things in the back that you shouldn't have to worry about. We also have a fire extinguisher just in case of emergencies. We decided to put our laundry basket here so that we can just throw our laundry behind the bed when we're done using it. Cabana provides some chairs for you to use at the campfire. They're opt-in so there's an extra charge. Kate is gonna show you the kitchen. So the cool thing about these doors is you can also open it all the way, like that. All you have to do is lift these levers. I like to use this to help me to drag it out. Welcome to my kitchen. There's a sink. There are also plates and bowls. These are all provided by Cabanavan. These are propane gas tanks that come with the kitchen if you choose to opt in. So let's take a look at the stove. It opens up like this, tucks neatly inside. Cabana even gives you pots and pans. You can very conveniently put away your pots and pans in here. There you go. Once you're ready to go to bed, every single window in the van has a cover. Let me show you how they work. <laughs> These just fold out and snap into place. And just like that, we're ready to sleep in peace. We're discussing where to go right now. What do you think, Z? I'm looking at a few places. Mm -hmm. There's this Cattle Point Lighthouse, mm -hmm. which looks pretty nice. Oh, I can't feel my ears. Temperature-wise, it's not even that cold, but the winds are just insane. You could stand at an angle and like remain at that angle because the winds coming against you are so strong. Give me some heat. When were you gonna tell me that this was what I looked like in the photos? <laughs> I was also looking at this Eagle Cove Beach, which looks pretty cool. So we just walked down this trail in the middle of the bush. I hope this is the right way. It's not very chilly, but the winds from the beach are kind of crazy. Woo. Woo. Oh my gosh! Wow! The driftwood is so warm for me. I pounded in the waves so much. Yeah, it's so smooth. Also, it's so light. It's like it's low. Whoa! Haha, <laughs> joking! So you smell that. It's cedar and we have some cedar trees, but this is the smell I remember when I was growing up. It brings back lots of memories of growing up here. What do you know about this tree? Not much. I just heard a lot about Douglas firs growing up because they're very common in the Pacific Northwest ah. and they can grow quite big and quite tall. It was really fun doing some sightseeing during the pockets of time available, but I also want to walk around the city and feel a little like the locals. This little town is just the cutest, quaintest little town, don't you think? It really is. It's wonderful. It really does remind me of when you're walking on the streets of Disneyland. All the houses sort of look like... I mean, like this. It's kind of a shame that we're coming in the low season because everything's closed. It's kind of interesting that a lot of the shops close at about 2 p.m. Are these real pumpkins? Yeah. Oh, wow. You know what else I had to ask Z if it was real? This view, breathtaking. And just like that, we're back in Seattle stocking up for our road trip to Portland. We're popping by Pike Place Market just to get a few things before we leave. One of these lobsters costs about a hundred bucks, but because it's so big, we don't know how to cook it on our van. So maybe we gotta get a smaller lobster or just get some scallops. And last minute, some donuts. So I got some medley potatoes, some broccolini. I got eight fat scallops. This pair is $4. It better be damn worth it. And Zena's favorite donuts. Let's go to Portland. Let's go to Portland. Woo! We got excited way too early. Zena's is currently at the back of our van checking on something. Baby, I think we have a problem. There's a whole bunch of water leaking. 
we're back at the cabana van um, headquarters to get our van switched out. So we're actually shifting everything from our existing van to the new one. But they've been very helpful. We are super grateful to Cabana Van. After settling in our temporary van, we visited Edgar Gonzalez, Z's childhood friend, and we drove out for dinner because we were so hungry by then. Oh my god, starving. Then we were back at his place to reminisce about some of Z's childhood by looking at their yearbook. Poser. I just did what the photographer told me to do. Why didn't you tell anyone else to do that? <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have my yearbook. We had a very long couple of days in San Juan Island. It was very adventurous and super worth the trip. Remember to like this video and hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next episode. He says we can sit on his lap, so I'm gonna do that.